Hello, welcome to this MagicAd tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how to import 2D symbols uh, from AutoCAD into your Revit symbol library using MagicAd. Um, to do this, um, you, you're going to require uh, MagicAd for AutoCAD. Uh, so, as we can see here, we have AutoCAD with uh, our MagicAd um, package loaded in. Um, <coughs> All I've done here is uh, I've created a, a standard DWG file um, using a particular naming convention. Um, the documentation uh, which you should receive to support this uh, this training video should go over the uh, intricacies of, of how this works. But to give you a brief overview, um, the uh, notes next to the symbol here use the same conventions. Uh, so here we have the first four characters, uh, MAGI there, um, that's a, a prefix which is a, a constant. That's basically instructing the code uh, that's used in our tools uh, that this is an object that you want to convert. The next three characters, uh, 1, 2, 0 in this case, uh, refer to uh, electrical fixtures. Um, again there's a, a, a list of uh, various codes for different types of objects and then here the next three characters uh, are the name you wish to give your symbol series which you can use as a filter when uh, adding the symbols to your uh, products in the data set followed by a unique identifier for the file uh, so this uh, this section here, this uh, three character underscore zero one, refers to the actual uh, individual identifier for the DWG, and then again we've got a unique identifier following that uh, for each symbol within that file. Okay, uh, so the the DWG uh, obviously would stop after the zero one here, uh, following that that's just for the symbols. Uh, this uh, text here that we have next to the symbol uh, I've used this as a, a reference to size my symbols so in this case uh, this text is um, 250 millimeters tall uh, now you can see that height there uh, so I would expect this uh, text to appear uh, on a uh, 1 to 100 drawing at 2.5 millimeters tall which gives me a good reference for how large my symbol is. Um, next to <coughs> the uh, naming convention that we've got here uh, following a space uh, and between these brackets here uh, basically is the description that we're going to give uh, the tooltip for our um, symbol. So when you're looking for the symbol in the symbol library in Revit this is the text that will display there. Uh, to actually create the symbol, uh, one of the important parts here is uh, this is all uh, polylines uh, and arcs. So um, uh, there's no um, hatches or filled regions here. Uh, the way that we've created this uh, filled region here is just with a thick polyline and an arc. Uh, likewise, you know, the, the same uh, applies with this symbol here. Um, to create uh, a, a symbol is very straightforward. Um, you can just draw polylines to the, the size that you would like um, and then detail it uh, as, you, as you would like to see it. And then this text here is uh, D-text. So when you're inserting the first line, you need to type D-text and then um, uh, obviously you can set up your, your size uh, following that uh, and then obviously type out the um, the name for your block uh, following this convention and then uh, to create another one of these I'm just going to copy these from a base point and paste them um, it, it does help to keep these you know a, a rational distance apart but it's uh, it's not a hard and fast distance, uh, it's just uh, obviously uh, that the distance uh, uh, does have a minimum but again the supporting documentation will we'll go into the details of that. 
Uh, here I'm just going to uh, name this new symbol uh, so that it's um, uh, unique and then I'm going to change the description as well uh, so this is just going to be a uh, single socket outlet like so uh, and then the next thing we need to do is uh, to turn these into blocks um, very straightforward process um, if we select the polylines and etc that make up our symbol here uh, we type block and then what we need to do is uh, name this block now this needs to follow the same naming convention again as the uh, the actual DWG itself and the text next to the block in this case it needs to match the text next to the block exactly um, so uh, we shall type uh, here we go uh, 01003 so this one um, will match the text that's uh, next to the symbol there uh, we click OK and then what we're going to do here is um, uh, we're actually going to uh, select our base point where we want the block to insert from uh, and that's the block created so if we click on that now you can see that's a, a block and uh, there is the name of the block which matches the string of code next to it uh, likewise uh, we'll do this new one which we created and uh, block so there we go that's uh, the unique number for that uh, <coughs> I have the uh, specify on screen option ticked for the base point so that when I click OK uh, I can click on the base point there and that's where I want the uh, 2D geometry to intersect with the insertion point of the 3D geometry uh, in the Revit model. Once we have uh, all of these um, as blocks and we have all our text detailed in the in the manner that we wish, uh, next we need to purge the file uh, and if, uh, if there is anything to purge, uh, make sure that that's purged out. So if you've brought your symbols in from blocks and exploded them, uh, then you will need to purge the old uh, block names from the uh, drawing. And then we need to save uh, our drawing. And then we type a command here, which uh, in this case, because this is electrical, it would be M-E-S-Y-I-M-P for Magicad Electrical Symbol Import. Here we get a warning just uh, stating that uh, if you don't know what you're doing you should uh, leave well alone so uh, just uh, be aware of that um, and then now it, it's going to ask us uh, how we want to uh, populate our uh, uh, library. So if you've created uh, numerous different files uh, all with the same um, TES in this case uh, identifier for the uh, symbol series you want to use um, <coughs> but obviously you've used different code numbers for the different types of um, uh, uh, entities that you can create these symbols for um, then in that case uh, you can select uh, multiple files um, it, obviously if you specify that that should be the, the um, particular symbol series that you uh, want to use and then um, click on the browse button here select the uh, drawing that you want to import the symbols from in this case this should match the drawing we have open um, and then when we click OK you should see it's imported that uh, file and now it's ready so the next step would be to open up Revit and open a project uh, it can be any project it's just gonna load this into your um, uh, Revit settings so we head to the Magicad common tab we go to uh, the symbol management drop down and then click symbol converter and then from here we select our file that we created um, the default location 
uh, for it to create th those files is in uh, your C drive, program data, magic add, and then the 2D symbols folder. And then in here, we should find there is our TES file. So if we open that, and then uh, for the first time that you're inserting, or if you're adding symbols to your library, uh, you can choose the append to existing ba database option and then the uh, the symbols will be added to that database if for any reason you want to change any symbols you can choose to overwrite the database and then all of the existing symbols will be deleted and replaced with the ones that you're inserting click OK and then at this point we need to close Revit and open it again and uh, this is going to um, uh, now <coughs> launch Revit uh, and open up the new imported MCS file which contains your symbol library. So when that's loaded, uh, what we need to do is open uh, a project again. Uh, it can be any project because this is now loaded into your uh, MagicAd uh, settings. I'll just give that a minute to load up. Okay, and then open a project. So, as you can see here, we've just opened up a, a project. I'm going to open a view that I'll be able to view the symbol that I've imported into. So here uh, you can choose your scale. Uh, I've created my symbols so that they look correct. 1 to 50 scale. Uh, obviously you can uh, change uh, the symbols uh, depending on the scale that you're um, drawing them for. Uh, we generally find that 1 to 50 scale will work in, in any scale um, but if you have a particular preference for uh, different sizes at different scales obviously you can create the symbols at different sizes in the first place and then uh, name them in such a way that it will allow you to identify which scale you should use for, for the uh, symbols in your uh, project. So then I'm going to head over to the MagicAd electrical tab because the symbols that I created were electrical products. I'm going to go to the install product feature and then in here I'm going to select socket and then I'm going to choose the device that I think it's appropriate for. So in this case I'm going to change the symbol for this generic fused connection unit. So if I edit that uh, product I can then select my 2D symbol and then instead of using the symbol series here uh, which at this at moment in time is Great Britain I'm going to turn that one off and when I scroll down you should see here is our new TES um, series which we created and here are our symbols that we created in that series so I'm going to select my switched view spur click OK and you can see there it's brought that symbol in to the project and uh, when I click OK it will allow me to insert that symbol uh, with that product There we are. So, um, importantly, um, the way that these symbols are created by the software, um, the symbols also work with our, our symbol organizer. So, if you were to arrange your uh, 3D geometry in such a way that uh, you were you were happy with it looking in the model. Um, then uh, obviously when you go to course view uh, as though you're uh, putting that on a sheet you can see there the symbols overlap so again we can use our symbol organizer select the symbols we've just created pick a base point and then choose our options for offsetting these I'm just going to put these so that they're all touching and then click OK and you can see there that that function works perfectly with this okay that should be everything you need to know. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Thanks very much for watching.